Hello friends, this video on introduction to Euclid's Geometry Part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. In terms, let's move to axioms. So, I, so what are axioms? So axioms, as I told that they are common notions or universal truth. And that is in any any world, not mathematics to me. It's in any world. They are universal truth. Okay. For example, I told whole is greater than part. So if I have big pizza, and if I have part of this pizza, obviously this one is bigger. Right. So, if I have uh, some big uh, bucket with water, and from this, if I this is full with water, the same bucket, if I uh, take out some water, part of water, whole water will be bigger than small part. Right. The whole is greater than part. Is a good example of. And there are certain other axioms also. For example, this is one. Uh, one we told was whole is greater than part right second for example if i say a is equal to b and b is equal to c if that is given what does it imply this implies a is equal to c correct so that is things which are equal to the same thing are equal to each other so for example they are both are equal to b things which are equal to same thing are equal to each other so if both a and c are equal to b that means a and c are equal And this A, B, C can be anything. For example, if A is area of circle, B is area of a square, C is area of a rectangle. Let's suppose so we have a circle, we have a rectangle square, and we have a rectangle. Okay, so this is A, this is B, and C. Assume. So if A is area of circle, rectangle, square, if area of circle is equal to area of square, area of square is equal to area of rectangle, that means area of circle is also equal to area of rectangle. But if you see this, this concept of A is equal to B and B is equal to C implies A is equal to C can be applied in any discipline. And that's why it is axiom. Okay. So the, the other says that if equals are added to equals, the whole number are equal. For example, if A is equal to B, A is equal to A, so the same. In both sides, if you add B, then A plus B will, will be equal to A plus B. So if equals are added to equal, the whole are also equal. Correct. For example, all these three are equal, right? So I know that if you add these two and if you add these two, the area will be equal because as so you why. If this area is equal to this angle area, this A and C, in both of these area, if you add a square area. This area will be equal to zero. Simple common sense applied in any discipline. Same thing instead of addition, if you subtract, so a minus b will be equal to a minus b. That is, if equals are subtracted from the equal, the remainder are equal. Okay. Or things which are double of the same things are equal to each other. For example, if a is equal to a, then price of a will be equal to price of a. Instead of double, if you can say half, if a is equal to a, half of a will be equal to half of a. That means things which are half of the same thing are equal to one another. Okay. Things which coincide with one another are, are equal to another. For example, if the square coincide with another square, the square a will be, for example, as here. This is one square. This a square is totally coinciding with another square b. There's another square b here. Right? That means the area of a is equal to area of b. Right here. Things which coincide with one another 
are equal. Example, will be triangle also. You have one triangle. Another triangle is exactly coinciding with this triangle. Actually, both the triangle has same area. So they are same. Okay. So these were some Euclid's axioms, and they are true in any discipline. Let's talk about Euclid's postulates. They are also universal truth. They are also universal too, but they are true only in geometry. In the field of geometry, and there are five postulates, five Euclid's postulates. Okay, so we'll go through all these postulates now. So the first postulate. Is that straight line may be drawn from any point to any other point? So let me write here. Straight line may. Please don't use the word may. Be drawn between two points. See, there are two points. Let's suppose I can draw a curve line like this. I can also draw a straight line. That's why there's a may. So there are two points given. I can actually, I can draw a straight line between two points. That is the first postulate. And if you see talking about points and line, that means it is specific to geometry. The second postulate says that a terminated line line. Produced in definitely form straight line. Okay, so if there is a line, this is the line segment actually. This is a line segment. Okay, so a terminated line or line segment. Let me say line. Or line segment. Okay, so it can be produced indefinitely to form straight lines. You can produce this indefinitely. It will also form a straight line. So this will also be a straight line. A point here and B point here, and some points here. Okay, so the first postulate, the straight line may be drawn between two points, or you can uh, also say that there is a unique line joining two points. There is a there is a unique line joining. Uh, there is a unique straight line joining two points. Let's see. A unique straight line because this is also line curved line. There is a unique straight line joining two points. The second postulate says that a terminated line, you have a line, you can actually produce this produces indefinitely to form straight lines. The third universal truth is, which is specific to geometry, is that a circle can be drawn using any center and any radius. Circle can be drawn using any center and any radius. Okay. So, example: you have a dot here. With a radius and a center. That is the third postulate. The fourth is all right angles are equal. You see, it's all common because all right angles are 90 degree. They have to be equal. Right? They have to be equal, but it's common. This is a universal truth and this is specific to geometry, so it is called postulate. There's a fifth postulate, very, very critical, very important postulate. We'll understand this postulate and we'll study this postulate in different flavors. So this postulate says that if a straight line falling on two straight lines, so there's a two straight lines, and there's a straight line falling on these, okay, and it makes an interior angle on the same side. 
and if you measure this angle, for example, this angle is angle 1, this angle is angle 2. If angle 1 plus angle 2 is less than 180 degree, then these two lines, even if you produce, if you produce indefinitely, so it will meet somewhere. It will meet. And it will meet on the side where the angle was less. But you see, for example, in this case, this is 3 and this is 4. So in this case, if you see angle 3 and angle 4 will be greater than 180. Right? So there are two lines, and if you you draw one more line here, see so these two lines sum, these two angles sum is less than 180 degree. So if you extend this line on this side, it will meet. That is the theorem. Okay, so let's give a point. This is This is another line, let's suppose. Okay. So there are two lines A, B, and C, D. This is a reference line, third line L, which is actually falling on these two lines A, A, B, and C, D. And this line L makes angle 1 and angle 2 on the left hand side, angle 3 and angle 4 on the right hand side. If angle 1 plus angle 2 is less than 90 degree, then it, this side, if you extend, angle uh, A and C side, if you extend, it will meet at some that is the fifth postulate. One again, right? Very important. So let me write if a straight line falling on two straight lines makes The interior angle on same side of it taken together is less than two right angle, as I can say, one hundred degree, then. Two straight line that is AB and CD lines if produced indefinitely will meet on that side. Which sum of angle is less than one angle. See, the line will, if the line are not parallel, one side the sum will be less than 180 and one side the sum will be more than 180. And if the lines are parallel, these angles will all, always be 90 degree. That means the sum of these angles will be. 180 or not 90 you can actually have like this so in this case the sum of angle on any one side will be 180 if the lines are parallel okay so that is the postulate okay so if you see the postulates and axioms both are universal truth okay both are universal truth and nowadays the postulates and axioms their terms are used interchangeably in the same sense Nowadays, actually, postulates is used as a verb. When I say, let us postulate, that means let us make some statement based on some observation or some universal phenomena. Okay, but but axioms and postulates has a difference in this book element. As per this book element, it has different sense. Okay, I mean it has uh, some similarity that both are universal truth. Both are. Universal truth. Okay. Axioms are common, common to any discipline. Talk about math, science, physics, biology, the same axiom will be true, but the postulates 
are specific to geometry. Only in geometry, uh, these are true. Okay, for example, if you say right angles are equal, the right angle is used only in geometry. Okay, so if you see exam example of axioms, that is whole is greater than part, this is true in any sense. Example of postulate, a straight line may be drawn from two points, that is a postulate because it is specific to geometry. Okay, and these postulates or axioms has to be consistent. When you say it is consistent, that means it is, if it is impossible to deduce from these axioms or postulates a statement which contradicts the previously proved statement, that means they are inconsistent. Correct. So if I say something, and then again I see something, I say it's a three different things. So from three, let's suppose I say four different things. So from three different things, if I can conclude that the fourth statement which I am telling is false, that means things are inconsistent. Correct. So, example I say, A is greater, A is, A is greater than B, first statement. Then I say B is greater than C, so second statement. And then I say that uh, A is less than C. Is it possible? So if you A is greater than B and B is greater than C, this implies A is greater than C. But I am saying A is less than C. That means these are not consistent. Okay. So when I say that these axioms and postulates are consistent, that means any axiom or any set of axioms or postulates should not contradict the previously said axioms or postulates. Okay. In fact, they are consistent. They don't contradict. Thank you. Visit our website examfear.com to watch more and more quality education videos. You can also attempt free online tests that are there in our website. You can also get access to tons of free study materials and you can also find free tutors and mentors in this website. Thanks a lot for watching.